the world's most popular banana may be on the verge of extinction. Similar to humans, bananas are also facing a pandemic. 99% of bananas exported to developed countries are just one group, called the Cavendish. And the Cavendish is vulnerable to tropical race 4, or Panama disease, a fungus that's now ravaging banana farms across the globe. So now you can compare, this is tropical race 4 in a Cavendish banana, then the, the plant looks very healthy. One scientist recently developed a line of Cavendish that is resistant to TR4, but it was genetically modified. In Europe, the GMs are under regulation, so we cannot use it. So scientists like Fernando had to start from scratch to find a solution, and they're working against the clock. Because if TR4 is not stopped, it would wipe out Cavendish. And it's already happening. This is an area of focus. A tax of 1,640 plants per hectare. We can be in 500 plants in this focus. There is no value of plants. We have to attack it from different fronts because there is no other way to contain it and limit it to this area. Globally, we're facing the collapse of a $25 billion Cavendish industry. So how did we get here? And can we save one of the world's most consumed fruits before it's too late? You probably know the Cavendish banana. You can find this type of banana in every supermarket around the world. They're so popular because they're yummy, they look nice, and they ripen as they transport. It's high yielding, so it's got quite a thick skin, and so it travels well and tastes pretty good. Comes in its own package. But there's a problem. They are sterile. They don't have seeds. No seeds means Cavendish bananas are clones of each other. So the only way to propagate them is in vitro or by taking new growths called suckers from the base of an older plant. But since they're all genetic copies, Cavendish are really vulnerable to disease. The domino effect, if you have everything wrong with just one clone, one disease can kill everything, plant by plant. That's exactly what's happening with TR4, one of the deadliest plant diseases out there. The fungus doesn't spread to humans, but it does eventually kill the banana plant, so no more fruit grows. Scientists guess the fungus probably started somewhere in Southeast Asia in the 90s and quickly spread across the globe. Then in 2019, it hit Latin America. Combined with the Caribbean, that area grows 75% of the world's bananas. Primero una reacción de mucho de impacto porque el fusario no estaba ni ni cerca en el continente y de repente aparece en nuestro departamento, en el departamento de La Guajira, en uno de los departamentos más importantes de producción bananera. To make sure the fungus doesn't spread, farms across Colombia have implemented biosecurity measures. Eva Norte 2 was one of the first farms in the country to detect TR4. <laughs> Workers wash down and disinfect the underside of any car that comes in, just in case there's infected soil hiding in the treads. Entonces cualquier parte de nuestro indumentaria que entre en contacto con suelo puede convertirse en un factor de dispersión. Los zapatos los ubica en esta zona, se gira, se pone el overol y se coloca las botas de caucho con que va a ingresar al traje. El calzado es único, esto se considera zona sucia y esta es zona limpia. Zona limpia porque es la que está bajo el control de la desinfección que está de la salida hacia la finca. Antonio's team built cement paths throughout the farm. So on their way to harvest, workers aren't walking on open soil. Y vemos, hemos visto drásticamente cómo se reduce la cantidad de suelo que se adhiera a las botas. Once they've reached the area ready to be harvested, workers walk through a sanitizing foot bath made of ammonium. En promedio aquí en La Guajira, un pediluvio cubre entre 35 a 40 hectáreas. Donde hay foco, en esas zonas colocamos pediluvios adicionales para cubrir la entrada y la salida de esas áreas de foco. Out in the field, workers measure the banana fingers to make sure they're ready to harvest. They're usually ready about 12 to 13 weeks after the fruit stem shows up. One worker cuts down a 65-pound bundle, while the other catches it and carries it to the cableway. That cableway system brings all those banana bunches to the packaging plant. First, workers sanitize the bunches with chlorine. Con el fin de retirar cualquier insecto que pueda venir del campo dentro de la fruta, como en el caso de arañas. Then they check the bananas for quality and any signs of fusarium damage. They cut off and throw bushels into a huge tank. That bath not only preserves the bananas, 
but washes off any of the latex that naturally occurs on the peel. The bananas get cut into smaller bunches of five to seven. Posterior a eso viene la parte de sellado, cubierta de corona para el tema de protección para el viaje. Next come those famous stickers. Pasa la, a la etapa de, de pesado de la, de la bandeja y por último está el área de empaque. Workers wrap the banana carefully so they don't bruise. That wrapping has holes in it so the bananas can ripen as they travel. No more than four hours after the bananas are harvested, those boxes end up on pallets loaded onto trucks. In este caso, para el día de hoy tenemos 960 cajas de bandeja 3 libras y 960 cajas de Walmart. The bananas are trucked to the nearby port, where they're moved onto ships. This shipment's headed to the U.S. With equipment, bananas, and people moving along this global supply chain, it's easy to see how the fungus could spread. If TR4 does sneak into a farm, the Colombian government has laid out strict guidelines for containing the fungus. In this place where we are, there was an intervention that was conducted in the 26th of 2019, where this is the second case of the Finque de Banorte 2. That means they found symptoms like the yellowing of the leaves, the splitting of the stem. Once TR4 is identified in a plant, you can't just kill that one plant. The fungus goes about 10 feet deep into the soil. Once the pathogen is in the soil, it's almost impossible to eradicate. So you have to kill off all the plants in that area. Nosotros en área productiva, pues que hemos tenido que erradicar están alrededor de 137 hectáreas. Son las que en su momento que fueron eliminadas por la presencia de, de esa planta sospechosa o esa planta positiva para Fusari. To keep operating the rest of the farm, Evan Norte 2 followed the government's three-zone plan. Una que es la zona A, la zona roja, que es en, en la zona más cercana a la planta con síntomas, se hacen las labores de inyección. The injected herbicide kills all the plants in zone A. Y adicionalmente a eso se les aplica unos tratamientos de aplicación de urea y, y se cubre con carpa. That tarps so birds won't land on the fungus and spread it around. There are also canals around the zone to keep any water away from the infected area. In zone B, called the buffer zone, que también se inyectan todas las plantas para el, con el fin de, de como una barrera entre esa zona y la zona de cultivo. Finally, in zone C, plants are allowed to grow, but they're constantly monitored for signs of TR4. Jose estimates biosecurity has cost this farm as much as five million dollars since 2019, so they're pricey, but the measures are working at keeping the fungus at bay. En todo el tema de contención, el Magdalena y el Cesar son departamentos libres de fusar en raza 4 tropical en este momento. No hay baja en el tema de productividad hasta la fecha. These biosecurity measures have contained the fungus in Colombia and kept it from spreading to Ecuador, the largest exporter of bananas in the world. But fungus can wipe out an entire fruit variety if not stopped. We know because it's happened before. In the early 1900s, a banana called Gros Michel was the most popular. But by the 1950s, one strain of the Panama disease wiped out the whole production of Gros Michel. Luckily, Cavendish was resistant to that first strain, so it took over as the banana of choice. The problem was banana companies built their entire supply chains around this one Cavendish variety. In 2019, they exported 20 million bananas and supported millions of jobs globally. But now, the Cavendish is also vulnerable. The history repeats itself now with the tropical race four and the Cavendish. Cooking bananas like plantains are also at risk for TR4. A risk for a food security because the plantains are a staple food in Latin America, in Africa, and many other countries. They are part of our daily diet. So yeah, the newest race of Fusarium is scary for both Cavendish and plantains. But this time around, we have advanced science. Researchers across the globe are working toward one goal. This guy actually invented a banana that did just that. Back in 2019, Dr. James Dale announced that his team had successfully injected the DNA from a resistant banana into a Cavendish, and it worked. We found the solution. We have a line of Cavendish which appears to be completely resistant to TR4. The thing we haven't done yet is a taste test, and that's because the GM, they look, smell, feel exactly the same as every other banana. We've only changed one gene. But no one would buy his miracle banana because it was genetically modified. 
A nivel internacional, las variedades modificadas genéticamente no son una solución ni siquiera tanto por el consumidor como por el comprador, como los que compran la fruta no, no aceptan. In the EU, most member countries have either partly or fully banned GMOs. In the US, they're allowed, but feared. One argument against GMOs is that these modified plants would quickly spread their genes and kill out biodiversity. But with bananas, that's not a problem. The genes don't move because they are sterile. You can grow a GM banana next to a non-GM banana for 50 years and the gene will not move from one to the other. Incredibly frustrating. There's a solution, but it's, it's a scientific solution, but not a political solution. So scientists had to go back to the drawing board, using what they learned from James to play the non-GMO game. Fernando is a breeder for Keygene, a genetics company in the Netherlands. And he thinks the best way to get around GMO regulations is through traditional breeding. Meaning you take two different types of bananas, the Cavendish and one that is resistant, and you essentially have them mate. And their kid is hopefully resistant to Panama disease, but still tastes good, like Cavendish. Crossbreeding or traditional breeding is something that happens every day in nature. So the bees are pollinating the different flowers with other flowers. So that's what we are doing here. We are acting as bees. Fernando has found a few resistant bananas to cross with Cavendish, but... Most of them are not even edible bananas, are the bananas that are full of seeds, like these ones. And to cross those with a Cavendish is hard. They are sterile, very difficult to breed. It's not impossible, so you can try to cross, but you need to do it many, many, many times to get only a few seeds. For James to make that first GMO banana, it took him... Nearly 10 years since our first field trial. For those future bananas that are traditionally bred, it'll take just as long. It will take lots of years because the life cycle of the banana is quite slow. But the longer it takes to traditionally breed a resistant Cavendish, the more the disease spreads, and the more strains of Fusarium could be released. Fernando says there's a bigger picture way to attack this problem. Diversity. Take tomatoes, for example. You go to the grocery store and there may be 10 or more different types of tomatoes. Cherry, vine, beef, Roma. That's diversity. So if one tomato gets in trouble, it won't be a huge loss. Fernando and his colleagues have the same vision for bananas. We have red bananas, pink bananas. Why not try to incorporate that into the market so that you can go to the supermarket and have a complete bench of uh, different options of bananas that you can choose. There are hundreds of different banana varieties around the world. A friend of mine collected one up in Papua New Guinea that he said, if you didn't know it, you think you're eating a strawberry. Yeah, so amazingly different flavors. And diversity would also help farms. But if you have different types of bananas grown together, probably one banana will be more resistant than the next one. So that one can stop the spreading of the disease to the next plant. So why haven't companies diversified? Because it's too expensive and complicated to change a $25 billion industry built around a monoculture. So until a solution is found, these biosecurity measures will have to be the short-term fix for keeping the big business of bananas alive. Es un antes y un después el, el fusarium. Muchas lecciones de, de, de nos hizo abrir los ojos sobre muchas eh, necesidades que tenía el sector que no visibilizábamos.